Hello guys, welcome to Java JSAM and in this video we can discuss about a Spring Boot security. A Spring Boot security is very very important for the interview also and what are the project you are going to develop for that also. So security almost we are using each and every project. So it's a very 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 important. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. What is a Spring Boot security? So a Spring Boot security is a part of the Spring framework specifically designed to handle the security related aspects in the Spring based applications. It simplifies the process of securing applications by providing a robust set of the features or authentication and authorization and the protection against the common security threat also. Okay, so a Spring Boot security features is very very important for the a Spring Boot developer or whoever is learning as a Java developer for them. Okay, it's very very powerful powerful tools they have provided us. So here are the some key components which we have to know before going to develop a Spring Boot applications. Okay, so what is authentication and what is authorization? Those two terminology is very very important and uh, in the two terminology only a spring boot uh, like uh, a spring boot security will exist okay so let's understand what is authentication okay so simply authentication means login page verifying the identity of the users or system trying to access the applications okay so whatever the things you are able to see in the front gate or main gate that is called a authentication. It may be the building guards or maybe uh, you have to like uh, show your ID card and then you can go inside this the building or maybe you have a any website and uh, he asking to log in first and then only you can access any things. So those websites are very very secure and they are providing the authentications for you. For example, if I tell you, you want to uh, book one IRC ticket, IRCTC ticket, then what you have to do, they will ask you first login, then only you can see all other details or you can book the tickets. Okay. In the same way, if you have something called make my trip or any other applications, they're asking first, what? Register. Register yourself and then after login and then only you can go to the inside the application and then after you can check it. After enter to the authentications, for example, you have a correct user ID and password, then what you want? You want what you can, what you want to do inside this. So if you have a, all those permissions, you can do each and everything that is called nothing but authorizations. So authorization means determining whether the authenticated user has a necessary permission to access a, a specific resource or platform certain action or not so nowadays people are building a website like a admin access user access public access okay so if you have a admin access then only you can see some of the part and maybe if you don't have access then you can't they will not show you those part also okay those features you can't able to access it Okay, so even if you have a login and but you can't you can't see those details because of the authorizations. You are not a, you don't have a proper permission for that to access it. Okay, so that is called an authorizations. Let's try to understand with some diagrams. Okay, so if you see here is in our diagram itself, here what I have mentioned. Okay, let's me open my pen first. So if you see here, this is the authentication and this is what authorizations. So in the left hand side, authentication we have and right side we have a authorizations. So it means verifying you, uh, verify you are who and you say you are a methods or methods, anything. So login forms that is a part of the authentications and access control of the URLs that is called a authorization. 
secure object in method that is called authorization access control lists SCL is a authorization but login to the application is a authentication HTTP authentication is a authentication HTTP digest is a authentication certifications you have that is called authentication certificate custom authentication method if you have they will generate some random key and based on that you are able to login that is called a custom authentication method so those are the part of the authentication and this is the part of the authorization okay let's go to the next slide let's see and understand in a spring boot application how you can implement and how internal structure will look like in the spring boot applications so in the spring boot application if you see here this is the http request okay so this means this is the client system he is sending the request to our website with maybe the http s colon double slash and uh, this is the google website or maybe make my trip website or ircd websites and they are sending the request http colon slash ircdc.com so they are sending the request what will happen they will filter like oh you are authenticated or not so if you are not authenticated they will send you they will filter it if you are not authenticated they will send to the login page so in the login page you have to enter the user id and password they will check you are exist in the database or not with the authentication managers or maybe the security context if you are not exist they will send you to the register page if you are already exist they will say okay if your user id and password is correct they will send to the dispatcher server dispatcher server will proceed your request to the controllers and whatever the request you have given based on that they will send you the response to the bank okay so this is the spring mbc so whenever you see the security part will involve in the front of your applications so this is the front and this is your applications okay a spring mbc this is the applications and this is the front of the spring security so every time whenever request will come they will validate it thus uh, the user is expired or not the user having a proper permission or not the user is login or not they will validate and then after they will send request to the dispatcher server and dispatcher server will send to the corresponding controllers and based on that they will proceed your request okay i hope you understood this is the internal architecture diagrams okay so just i have demonstrated you next things a stand alone application for example you are developing one application for the one store maybe grocery store or maybe some medical stores and they have only one or two systems then what you can do you can develop one stand alone applications based on the security config how you can provide the security for that because you don't want to handle the multiple users in that place so you can just provide the normal authentications based on the user id and password okay so basic authentication configurations we can do easily so if you want to configure basic authentications with the username and password you can do inside the application.properties files so in that properties file you can provide spring.security.user.username your username provide and your password you can provide what is the access of user you can provide and uh, through that you can provide the one level of the security easily okay so this is one of the security which is called basic authentication configurations we can do we can create one single then say uh, standalone applications and we can add the security each and everything and i will show you in the next video in this video just try to understand okay what is the next things passport encoding okay so passport encoding means uh, what are the passports you have provided in the configuration those you can encode with the help of the bcrypt passport encoder you might configure it in the bin methods like hey configuration class but you can't still mention the passport format in the properties files otherwise you can directly uh, provide the bcrypt password not uh, your exact password first you can bcrypt it 
and decrypt it and then you can provide here encrypt it and provide here and then we can use it okay you need to generate the bcrypt hash separately and please uh, place it into the properties file then also it will work third thing is session management so the first things what is basic authentication you have to understood for understanding is security okay then after you have to understood password encoding then third thing is you have to understood session management because every user having a one session for example one user login in your website and they have done some operations and then after he will not doing anything so after five minutes or after two minutes you have to close the session for that users again you can ask hey please log in then you can do anything it means you are providing the session management also so the session management you can provide for the 30 minutes okay five minutes okay and you can uh, create a sessions like always session will not expire so like that policy also you can create okay in the standalone application also okay custom login page and logout url so if you want uh, like uh, a spring boot also provide some default uh, custom login page so if you don't want those pages you can customize your own login page and logout urls and you can do the operations on that also okay how we can do in the properties file itself you can provide the custom url you can provide the home url you can provide the login urls everything failures this is the custom logout url this is the invalidate session true this is the auth so if each and everything you can provide inside the application dot properties file also this is the fifth thing which is very 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 important okay adding a security configuration for example uh, in your uh, stores having a multiples users somebody having a admin access somebody having a user access somebody having a public access so based on that you can configure the security also like hey uh, if you have a uh, public public access then you can only see the public uh, things you can't see the admin or user things if you have a user access you can uh, log in with the users and you can see those details and here you can provide the customized login page and the customized logout page also okay so this is the basic idea about the spring boot security which we have to develop into the next videos and we can we are going to understand each and everything how it will work okay thank you so much